Hi everyone and welcome to Jewels of the Trade, the channel dedicated to spreading accurate information on jewelry and gemstones. Today I'm here with Chris Mason, one of the owners of Mason K. Jade. Mason K. Jade, located in Colorado in the U.S., specializes in natural untreated jadeite jade products, loose and mounted, and offers testing and appraisal services as well. Chris, welcome. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Jordan. Always nice to see you. I missed your face. I, I miss seen, your face. I know. I haven't seen you since <laughs> Tucson. It's too long. I'm so far away. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm glad that we get to do this together though. Chris, will you tell all of our beautiful YouTube subscribers, because yes. you all subscribe, right? You subscribe about Mason K. Jade and what an amazing company it is? Absolutely. Well, I will happily tell you. So we've been around since 1976. I, so I'm Christina Mason. I'm married to Jeff Mason. It was Jeff's uncle and father that started the business in 1976. Really, his uncle kind of took off and um, really felt there was a need for untreated natural jade in the industry. And so we've kind of uh, developed since then. We used to have more reorderable items. Really, now we're more one of a kind. Jeff and I have slowly taken over. It's kind of trickled down to us and we are very proud to be the owners. And we're, we're always here to talk to anyone. If anybody ever has any questions, you can always call, email, DM me on Instagram. There's always a way to get, get a hold of one of us. No problem. So they answer all of my questions we try. and I have many. We <laughs> I'm always calling up there trying to understand Jade. Jade is a complicated subject. There's so much to know. Well, and often people hear the word Jade and that refers to so many things because um, so many people use it in so many ways, some correctly, some incorrectly. So often it's just referred to as just a green stone. Um, but there are two kinds of Jade. There's Jadeite and Nephrite. And I will repeat a few times just so everybody knows there's a tremendous amount of information on our website, uh, just masonk.com. All kinds of information. Most of what I'm talking about here today will be on the website. And then we will have a new blog post just dedicated to the colors of Jade and what we talk about here today. They are a wealth of information and you're definitely going to see that in this video here today. Today we're talking about the colors of Jade. A lot of people think of green when they think of Jade. And yes, Jade is green and comes in the most beautiful green colors. I mean, it's just, it's exquisite, but it comes in other colors as well. So I'm going to let Chris get started with green jade, and then we're going to work our way sure. through the, the colors of jade. Absolutely. We can start with green. Um, jade in general uh, has, you know, has been around in the Chinese society and, you know, in their everyday life for thousands and thousands of years. At first, it was really mostly nephrite. And then some several hundred years ago, they found jadeite. And that was it. Once they found jadeite, that was it. Um, because it, they did start finding in all these amazing array of colors. You can see most of them on the color chart behind my head right there. And the color chart is available on our website. And you can always, again, call or email and we'll send you your own copy. No problem. But you can view it on the website now anytime. Um, so green. So, what, you know, everybody talks about green as being, you know, number one and the favorite. I think it is for several reasons. First, I did learn that uh, Qing Long of the Qing Dynasty, which I believe was the last dynasty, so this emperor found this fabulous green, and that was it. He wanted everything in green, everything. His buttons, his cups, his writing utensils, plates, everything was cut out of green jadeite. His pillow, even his, he slept on a jade pillow in a jade bed. Isn't that, is that not crazy? It's crazy. And from then on, <laughs> it was just green was to be it. So that really started with him, I think. However, I think more commonly now is that we tend to find more rough in green. Uh, I don't think they find the same quantities of the rough in red and yellow and lavender and all that. Um, so I think green and green was just more traditional, even though red is one of the most major colors in Chinese culture. So red is very important. Uh, but in terms of jade, I do think a lot of it is the rough material that is found. We do tend to find, especially in the finer qualities, each color has is associated with an element in in earth the earth elements so uh green is wood i i do love the idea of connecting jade to the elements because you can really see in so many cultures especially the chinese but guatemalan as well you know in, during the mayan civilizations and all over the world this this reverence for jade and it was always 
seemingly elevated to this status above other materials, above any other gemstone, any metal, any anything else. And as if as, as if it's a category of its own. And I think that that really says a lot, not just about different cultures' deference, you know, to this material, but literally how useful it was and how much of a part of their lives it was. Going back thousands of years, jade was used in tools and in relics and for cooking and for like weapons. And it was this huge part yeah, of their back life. Back to Neolithic times. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then when they found even brighter material, they couldn't even believe it and wanted to make everything they could out of it. And of course, the emperors found amazing pieces. Yeah. And they're like, how is this like the best, toughest, like most amazingly useful gemstone and also this beautiful, like what is happening here? It's such an exceptional stone. You know, gold has value, but jade is priceless. And that's really says everything about how the Chinese and the East feel about jade. Um, That's how I feel about jade. I think it's time that we talk about the second highest valued color in jadeite. What is that, Chris? Absolutely. That would be lavender. And lavender, and you know, in, in doing some research and trying to figure out what's most popular, what's the highest value, what's, you know, what's considered, you know, what's the order of jade? I really found that um, there's the, the old world and the new world. You talk to people that are a little older and they might have a different list, you know, than newer Ooh. and also East versus West. And that's really sure. most important. So in East versus West, there are a few little differences. So, and we'll talk about that, but in the list, lavender is, is really second. Um, and lavender. Wow. So we didn't talk about, so Jade, um, so Jade in general is, and again, this is gem nerdish, which I am not, but it's a, it, she is, I'm not, I'm she not. doesn't know I it, but she it. is. We've converted her. <laughs> it, it is interesting. I mean, the color is beautiful. We don't always ask why it is the color it is, but um, the green stones are green because of chromium found in the earth and surrounding material because jade is a metamorphic rock. I know, nerd alert. Um, Look at you. Know, it's a metamorphic <laughs> rock and the, the different materials and chemicals in the earth when the stone cooled is what caused the colors. So it's very, it, it is interesting. But so for green, it's chromium, which is the same color, same material that colors emeralds, which is an interesting little tidbit, right? Isn't that right, Jen Nerd? I think so. That probably. I'm, oh, no, I, I think that's true. <laughs> I think that's true. Um, <laughs> Elements are hard. It is, hard. It is hard. I know. We're going to keep this simple. So with, with <laughs> lavender, it's manganese. I don't know manganese. Okay. So that's what, that's what gives it its amazing color along with other, whatever else is in the earth, but that is the major source of its color. Um, and it is second and is fabulous. I'm assuming you're showing some fabulous lavender jade. Um, Absolutely. one of the things I want to make sure to mention about our color chart is that it's really for reference. Um, it, people call and say, okay, cause they are numbered on the color chart. I'd like a number 27. It's really more, it's an important, um, it's an important piece to have so that we can all talk about the same color language. So I can describe pieces to people and people can call me and they can describe things using our color chart. What everyone should understand is that jade is found in every possible variation between all those colors on the chart. So I just described a few minutes ago a loose red jade stone to someone and described it between, I think it's number 26 and 27 on the chart. So it's approximately. So at least people have some idea because the range is just ridiculous. And that's an and in the case of lavender, there's a huge range because it can be very pale and white and it can be very rich, very rich. and rarely Pink. purple, you know, because we usually yes. we usually try not to call it purple yes. jade because it, it typically is lavender, but it can it can it actually and can be that vivid color. Crazy rare. Insane. Crazy. It's so beautiful. Yes. I mean, seeing it in person, it's like it makes you want to cry. It's surreal. It does. And then you have some lavenders that are kind of on like the gray, almost bluish. And smoky. I think I think you call it smoky. Yes, yes the smoky yes. lavender. So there is this kind of like spectrum. Yes, and pink. Absolutely. Pink. There's pink is kind of pinkish. You can see, I think, on the 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 layout that you have, there's one ring that's a little more pinky, and there's a smokier yeah. ring. It really is a tremendous range. And that's another reason why jade is not priced per carat. 
it, they're just individual pieces uh, because you can't really set carrot prices for these things because every piece is an individual. And really, that's why when one of the things I love most about when you're buying jade is you're getting a one of a kind piece. It's yours. There is not another one like it. It, is, it would be very rare to find something exactly the same. So we have green, we have lavender. Yes. And then what What would be kind of like the next? I think on in all aspects, I think ice is next. And ice jade. Ice jade is the coolest. I know. We love it. We love anything icy. So ice jade and is, is jade without color that is highly translucent. So jade without color that isn't highly translucent is white. It's just white jade. It's pure. It's pure jade. Um, now, one of the interesting things comparing east to west is that that after ice jade, when thinking about the east, is really white nephrite is really what comes up next. So it's a very interesting point. We, we don't really deal in white nephrite, um, but in the in the east white nephrite is really revered and really loved. And I would say it's worth noting that the white nephrite does look different yes, than the white jade. Absolutely. There's a noticeable difference in appearance because the white nephrite, they typically call it, they want the mutton yes. fat. So it has this kind of greasy Creamy, luster and it's kind, kind of, of a different yes. creamy color. Beautiful. beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's a incredible. beautiful material. It's my favorite material really in, in nephrite. Uh, most, oh, it makes me emotional. It does. And then the white jadeite, that's a, more of a white, white, yes. less creamy, a uh, little bit more vitreous, a little bit more glassy yes. looking. So I would say like noticeably different. Like if you're looking at two pieces side by side, you'd be able to say, oh, Easily. this one's nephrite and this one's jadeite. Yes. And then I, you already said it, but I just want to clarify when distinguishing ice yes. jade from white yes. jade, the difference there is the translucency ice jade to be considered ice jade has to be very translucent. Absolutely. absolutely. There's icy white, um, you know, there's kind of whitish ice, but it's quite clear when it's <laughs> ice. And now ice is, as I said, it's just jade with no, no impurities really that cause any color. But what makes it translucent is the tightly packed material. So really all the colors are found icy and translucent. Um, so there's very translucent green and lavender and red and yellow. Everything is found uh, in some translucent form. Um, they're just much, much more rare and therefore much more expensive. That's when you get into finer qualities. So if we're looking for finer qualities in all the colors, we're looking for vivid color, even color, and translucency. There's even lesser known colors than the green, lavender, and ice. Um, there's red and yellow. Tell us about those. Yeah, so red. So red, as I said before, is really um, a very important color um, in Chinese culture. And so, yes, red jade is quite revered. Finding it in its finest forms is more rare. Uh, we don't see the fine, fine red. I think I put a pair of uh, very fine red earrings on our layout, just fine little red cabs. Those are really very fine. Don't We don't see those too often. As you see, they're yummy. They're not highly translucent, but they do have some translucency. We wouldn't necessarily call them icy red. Icy red is very rare. When it's opaque, it's still beautiful. When you get that translucency, it looks almost kind of like amber. Yes, it can, especially if it's... A, you want to eat you, that oh, too. You do, especially if it's a little more orangey color. Um, yes, it's like maple syrup. Yes. And everything, you know, <laughs> between the reds and yellows, because yellow would really be next on many of our, our listings, east or west, I might put gray ahead of yellow uh, for the West, here in the West. We really love our gray, yes. and I think it's yes. it's underappreciated in the East. They're not huge fans the, of the gray. They'll I get love there. It. It's so cool. It's smoky looking. That's what I love about it. And something that I, I, I used to see and think, I bet men will love that. Men like onyx. Men like black stones. And they yes. do. Men love, love the black and gray yes. jade. But it's not just men. I would say like every demographic that I've interacted with I, I have not met a person who doesn't see the gray jade and be like, oh, oh, let me try that on. Let me touch it. Let me hold it because it I has, it. it's more than just a color. I think with the gray jade, it's the whole experience with the texture and kind of the swirls and the smokiness. And jade just feels good. If you haven't had the opportunity to feel and touch and wear jade, I would encourage you just even to go to a local jewelry store and just ask to see their jade and touch it and feel it. Nothing feels like jade. It just feels Nothing amazing. Feels like I wear it every day. And of course, millions of people do believe that it has healing and soothing qualities. Um, many believe, you, many people have heard about 
how if you wear your jade and it increases in color, gets stronger in color, you're healthy. And if the, the color gets lighter, that you're not healthy. So you and I have talked about this before. I do have a theory about that. I don't think it's nonsense at all. I don't think millions of people are wrong. I do think it has to do with the oils in your body. Because as we wear the jade, as I see, you see, I have my disc on, I wear my disc almost every day, at least this one or something else, you've got your beads on, they're touching your skin. So they're touching the oils in your skin. I also play with it and touch it all day because yes. it's, and it's, a it's rock. the fidget spinner. Yes. It's a rock. So there might be porousness depending on the individual piece and how compact its internal structure absolutely. is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I do think that there's something to the oils in your body. And maybe if you are healthy, it just keeps the polish of your jade healthy. It is not really, it should not, it should not change the color of your jade. But when, when jade is finished, it's polished, a little beeswax is placed on it, that beeswax will eventually wear off and the oils in your skin can help make up for it. So it just keeps your jade looking healthy, that's all. But maybe if the properties of the oils in your skin, if you're not healthy, maybe it doesn't have the same effect on the jade. So I think there's something to that. But I encourage people, I tell people all the time, please, if you have jade, wear it, love it, Love your jade. Jade loves love. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us and talking about the colors of jade. Everybody keep an eye out. We're going to have more collaborations like this, and we're going to feature more information from Chris, the jade lady. She's so fantastic. She knows so much, and we're going to talk about all kinds of subjects regarding jade, and you're going to get to hear it from the experts themselves at Mason K. Jade. So, Chris, thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you, us. Jordan, anytime.